Hello, this is Dominic Arvita with MemSQL. Transforming the business requires a simplification aligned around a new operating model. To address IT's current data challenges, it's necessary to simplify to accelerate. I offer two recommendations on how to achieve that. So let's get started. We all are experiencing the demands of the growth of data. And we see this in a lot of different ways across different industries and different businesses. This trend has been accelerating in the last few years. And you can think of it in terms of the three Vs in terms of data volume, variety, and velocity increasing. Simultaneous with this growth in data is business use and performance and expectations are growing. And analytics are now moving from what was purely historical to more cases where real-time data is needed for quicker reaction time. The problem that we see in general, and this is the theme of my talk today, is where we can accelerate insights on growing sets of data. And to address the sorts of responses and the problematic responses that the industry has had. And those are what you see listed here on the right. And even though this data is growing, it's becoming increasingly difficult to get analytics in the moment for decision-making in context. There's a sluggish event to insight time or response period. Secondly, the costs and the complexity of handling this deluge of data is increasing. And finally, there are more demands of concurrent access to the data in terms of mobile phones, dashboards, et cetera. Exacerbating this problem is actually the current approach to cloud computing and that it's so easy to spin up new data stores, we see that the approach to polygot persistence drives more and more silos of data. And as we saw in the on-prem era previously, you have a data store per application. So for instance, for a sales application, there's the transactional or operational database, and then the data is copied over to a data warehouse, and that helps to divide the load across these and isolate the workloads across two different databases. But as more applications are added to the enterprise, such as a, a dashboard on that data warehouse, you have additional copies for different lines of business, say manufacturing now wants to access part or some of that data set, and they have their own data warehouse, but then for an operational view, you would copy that into data mart or a selection of data marts for each of these different views. And so it goes on that with a per view that each line of business needs or per use case, the proliferation of these data stores increases. And this has been true in the on-premise world, but in the cloud era and in cloud environments, it's even easier to push a button and spin up infrastructure applications and databases. That in itself is not a bad thing until it starts to cause this kind of spaghetti complexity. One other dimension to think about in this is that not all of these database types or data store types are equivalent. Often they're purpose built, they have a specialty purpose. And there's a trend over the last few years to choose a particular database or data store per workload. For instance, if I have full text search to do on a website, I might use something like a Lucene engine, or if I've got to accelerate fetches for a key value cache or for a mobile application, I'll use like a key value cache or an in-memory data grid. Finally, if I'm a web developer creating a product catalog, I might want to store and write that data in JSON so I can evolve my schema easily and then use a document database for that. All of these techniques are good and we have lots of choices as application developers and senior IT leadership to pick the data store that suits each of these workloads. The problem starts to be when there's a proliferation of different types within these and just the sheer number to manage. So you, there are some advantages here in using each one of these. You do have the isolation across these systems, but as I said before, they're not equivalent functionalities. And at some point, typically the things that traditional databases have provided well, S relational SQL databases in particular, joins and being able to have a normalized model that reduces data duplication becomes really important and optimizations around that. 
So how can you have your cake and eat it too? How can you have the benefits of this flexibility for these types of data stores, the scale and speed of these data stores, but not have to have these drawbacks of these cons like joins that are not supported and have to be written in application code? I'd like to suggest two recommendations to handling this problem. First is a rethinking of enterprise data platform architecture. Traditionally, data architectures for the enterprise are segmented by functional group or business process. And the data is prepared in processing stages, typically through extract, transform, and load ETL processes in ETL pipelines pushing the data stage is needed into each of those areas. Uh, following Eric Evans, the author of Domain Driven Design, and his concept of the bounded context to um, demarcate different uh, uses of data by function, there's an idea that's catching on in the enterprise architecture community called distributed data meshes. And the central idea is that you collect and prepare all of the data uh, based on the data product that's going to be managed. Um, so raw data that's needed, refined data, enhanced, filtered, etc. at any of those stages are, are placed all together and there's a product ma manager approach to uh, curating and maintaining all of the data needed for a particular data product, be that data product uh, is for internal customers, or it could be for external customers in the form of a, a RESTful API or a data service. So the idea is to move away from pipelines of ETL or streaming processes that different uh, groups hook into and more towards uh, data product domains that are used. That's really the first concept. And this thinking dictates the sort of governance that you have around um, your data infrastructure. Secondly, it, there's an idea here of moving from push and ingest to pull and serve, meaning that, again, with the pipelines approach, this data is, is subscribed to over an event bus or from ETL uh, batch processing streams, and it lands in the target area, and then it's up to that team to pull uh, all of the data they need together. This, this concept of distributed data meshes turns that on its head, and there's more of a pull and serve as needed basis uh, to access that data. So these are just some um, governance and organizing principles around a new way to approach uh, data platform architectures. But whatever the approach, you have to ma manifest this or realize it through particular technologies. Um, and there are quite a few advances in this area that can help simplify that problem. And that's when it comes to renewing the technology. So I just mentioned that you're to move from pipelines to domain, but not all pipelines are created equal equally. But the first idea is, in general, uh, to move away from batch processing where possible and more towards stream processing. Data is not a static thing and your business can't be run in 24 hour snapshots effectively. Not these days, not with the data volume um, that needs to be processed and the variety. So moving towards uh, consuming change event streams in particular, uh, what's known as stream processing or change data capture is the better way, the more continuous way to uh, work with your data. Um, Secondly, where there's, there's other opportunities there, here to reduce data redundancy, data duplication. Um, and that's just in the traditional way that we deal in the industry with transactions or OLTP databases separate from online analytic processing or OLAP. And if you have a technology that can combine these two at scale, and ingest the raw change event stream for the transactions and perform the analytics on that, then you've simplified this and you've eliminated 
batch ETL between your OLTP and OLAP. Not for all cases, but in, in many cases where the most valuable in the moment decision making needs to be made. MemSQL delivers this unification and simplification across the data infrastructure for transactional and analytical workloads. And our philosophy is that you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have polyglot persistence or in it said in another way, you can use these different styles and styles of data types and access styles, document, key value, search, relational, geospatial, and do all of that in one unified database. Mm -hmm.